Hello again, this is part three. <clears throat> so we were at Videothek's shame last time. Then Waba Laba says, when a Christian knows they're saved, they're saved. Yeah, but how do you know? It doesn't answer the question. So I say, if you do sin, you're a liar. That's what God says. Next, it's toasty. Hello, it's toasty. He says this. And then he says this, and then I say this. You can pause if you want. I can. I'm trying to cover more, so I'm, I'm going to focus on the more important posts. So Jesus demands perfection. We can't earn heaven, but Jesus says, "Be perfect." Again, we cannot earn heaven. I never said we could earn heaven, but Jesus still commands this. Perfection is still the goal. You need, to, you need to avoid sin to be perfect. You need to repent of sin to be perfect. So repentance is necessary to, to obey the command to be perfect. So, it's toasty said this, which I liked, and then this and this. So I say thanks for the support, it's toasty. But then, after I say, nice to see not everyone jumps on the God loves sin bandwagon of fools, he says, the Bible calls them fools. We won't, though. Keep it that way. Let the love of Christ impact our speech, my brother. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition so that they can repent, to make it more likely for them to repent because if you tell someone, you're a piece of shit, they're not likely to listen to you, I understand. But we're not talking about just any people. We're talking about people who know that they're wrong and don't give a damn, no matter what you say. As I get to. So I mock him and I say, Jesus to Bible experts, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? So you, if you were consistent, it's toasty. The Bible calls them vipers. We won't, though, keep it that way, Jesus. Do what I say, Jesus. Let the love of God impact our speech, Jesus. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition. Not in pride, like Jesus, if God perhaps will grant them repentance. And Jesus must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach patience. I challenge Jesus. Yeah, you do. You do. So then I say, you're accusing Jesus of sin for calling a spade a spade. If you were consistent, you would judge Jesus as you judged me. So then he pretends to be innocent. You can pause and read. Pause. 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 He's like, what are you trying to say? That Jesus was never compassionate? Strom and fallacy. I did not say he was never compassionate. And he's like, this is YouTube, therefore it's wrong to follow Jesus' example. Uh, no, that's a non sequitur fallacy <laughs> and a red herring because it doesn't matter that some readers are not the hypocrites I exposed as Jesus did. Not to mention, when Jesus exposed the Pharisees, there were people there who were not the Pharisees he was exposing. So it doesn't matter that there are other people around. What matters is your double standard judging me for judging, which is hypocrisy, by the way as Jesus did. Although, of course, you did it gently. You were trying to correct me gently, so there is a difference there. But it doesn't matter, because I, you know, I don't have to be gentle with the heretics. I don't. Jesus was not gentle with the Pharisees, and they are equivalent to these heretics. And you're a heretic, too, because you're saying that it's wrong to do what Jesus did. So I'm like, you were wrong, be humble, accept it, and move on. You know, when I'm wrong, uh, I admit it. In my, in my in part one, I admitted that I was wrong about something. Anyway, so I'm not pretending to have never sinned. Of course, I've made mistakes, but I repent. That's the difference between us. I don't like sin. I don't want to stay in that mud. So, so then he says, some people will not take this method of tone when we speak. 
So we must care for the other person as Jesus does to get the message through. Nonsense. You are telling me I am sinning for offending, even though Jesus offended the same way you're a hypocrite. So I ask him this. He doesn't answer. Do you believe the Pharisees accepted Jesus' offensive tone? So, so did he answer that question? Did the Pharisees accept Jesus' tone? He doesn't mention the Pharisees here. He doesn't answer the question here, nor here, nor here. He says he's still reading the, the Bible. You don't even have to... You don't even have to read more than one book to know that God isn't against calling a spade a spade. And if you read Luke, he says, I finished the book of Luke. In, in the book of Luke, Jesus was calling people, Jesus, Jesus was insulting people. That's why they murdered him. And if you don't insult people, you're not following Jesus' example. You have to insult certain people, not all of them, obviously. Again, if they claim to follow the true God, but they are hypocrites, you point it out to them and they resist the truth, then you can insult them. You can call them snakes because that's what Jesus did. And we have to follow his example, whether you like it or not. So, did he a answer my question? Did, they, did the Pharisees accept Jesus' tone, his offensive tone? He didn't mention the Pharisees here. He, he talked about Peter instead of the Pharisees, so he's changing the subject to someone who, who actually would repent, as opposed to the Pharisees who were very adamant about not repenting. So changing the subject to Peter instead of the Pharisees, he does not answer the question. And over here also, doesn't even mention the Pharisees. So he didn't answer my question. And over here also, he calls me a brother, I'm not your brother. You're a hypocrite and you're judging me, you're attacking me for following Jesus. Don't call yourself a Christian guy. You seem to be legit at first, but then you attacked me for nothing. Oh, you offended the disgusting hypocrite shitheads. Yeah, I did offend those stupid pieces of shit. So what? Jesus did the same. He called them snakes. What is more offensive than that? What is a piece of shit? It is someone who is worthless and disgusting. What is a snake? Someone malicious, ultimately worthless because they're going to burn forever. What do you? How do you get rid of trash? You burn it. That's the effective way to get rid of trash, not putting it under a bunch of earth and covering it up and pretending it's not there. So, you didn't answer my question, checkmate. And I'm done reading his shit because I don't have time to, you know, it's me against almost everyone. That's usually how it is. So, he's like, obedience is not necessary to be loved by God. I say you're moving the goalpost from the condition of salvation to the condition of love. While God loves even his enemies, while at the same time hating them, such as Psalm 5, 5 says, Thou hatest all workers of iniquity, and you will destroy those evil people. Uh, that love doesn't last forever if they die in their sins. God doesn't send people to burn forever, abandoned by him, if he still loves them. As for those claiming to follow Jesus, obedience is the condition for salvation, as proven by Leviticus 26, 13, which you can see at this time in, in part one. If you heretics were right, then God would never have let Babylon take the Jews captive. They would have lived in sin, such as idolatry, and God would have still protected them. Except that's not what happened. He hated them because of their disobedience. So he let them get slain, raped, and shackled. He hates you to repent. So then Elijah Royalty, Mr. Sock Public Accounts, as covered in part two, exposed there. You disgusting work of Satan. <laughs> You're funny. It's hard to take this guy seriously. Look at this. You disgusting work of Satan. You tool of destruction. Thank you for saying I destroy your shitty arguments. You are a fool. And I add, you are an idiot. Isn't that redundant? If you think you can just cherry pick God's word, if, as the Spartans said, your argument is disgusting. Having to obey God is disgusting to minions of El Diablo and completely contradictory to the Bible. You can't get further from the truth with how he's talking. Obeying God is completely contradictory to the countless verses in both the Old and New Testament saying we must obey God. How blind can you get? 
Have you no faith at all in Jesus' power to give you a license to murder, rape, and lie until he accepts you into heaven with blood on your hands and an unrepentant heart? Uh, that's not the Bible. That's not the biblical Jesus. That's your false Jesus. You seem to have jumped to the conclusion that I believe I could earn heaven. No, I cannot earn heaven. My good works are never good enough. Nonetheless, God commands good works. Repentance is a command, not a suggestion. You can't just pick and choose. Then don't ignore the verses in my video in part one, Cherry Picking Hypocrite. So he's, then he quotes Romans saying, those God predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. He says that from the moment God chooses us, it's as if we are already glorified in heaven. There is nothing that can prevent us from being glorified, he says. Says the heretic, because God has already purposed it in heaven. Once a person is justified, he can sin as much as he wants. He can rape as many women as he wants, and he doesn't have to stop raping according to this heretic, who is an idiot. Because obviously God isn't going to accept that shit. You need to repent. So you're not looking at oh that's is that what I said? No, that's what I said. No, that's what I said. Sorry. You're not looking at a big picture. You need to reconcile that excerpt with Second Peter two, which includes the following. Now they take that out of context. If the Bible said only this, only this, then yeah, he seems to have a point. But you need to take the whole Bible to understand what the Bible is saying, not just parts of it. Otherwise, you're going to get a distortion. Like if a blind person touches an elephant, they're going to be like, oh, look at this long thing. Oh, I know. An elephant is just like a tree. It's just a big stick thing. No, an elephant is not just a tree. You need to look at the big picture, and then you see the actual shape. You get, then you see the reality. You need to look at more than just the verses that you cherry pick, you stupid libtard heretic. Oh no, I offended the feelings of a piece of shit. Yeah, sue me. <laughs> so, they're not looking at Second Peter 2, which crushes, is the most clear verse that proves that there are a bunch of hell-bound lying snakes. For if after you have been saved by knowledge of Jesus, freed from sin and the guilt of sin, you are again sinning, and sinning some more and not stopping the sin, you are overcome by sin. In that case, you are going to end up in a worse situation than merely ordinary hell. You're going to go into like the worst level of hell, the highest degree. You're going to be next to Caiaphas, you're going to be next to Nero, <laughs> burning in the lake of fire in the end, which is also sad. And I'm laughing because of, of how, you know, I'm not, like, I, I pity them, yeah, but it's kind of funny how to imagine Nero burning next to Hitler, n burning next to Mao Zedong, burning next to these guys, like, that's how evil you people are, you're, you're like them, you're similar to them, that's how, <laughs> it sounds like an exaggeration, but you're actually just like them. The only reason that you are not considered more evil is because you don't have the power to exercise that evil as they did. So they were able to express how evil they were more effectively because of the power that they had. But you, you're, what are you? You're just like me. You're just another denizen. You're just another citizen. You're just another mere mortal. You're just another person. That's why you can't express your evil as much as them. But in your heart, you're just like them. Anyway, part four later, God willing. I'm going to get to the part, God willing, where, where, um, where, where they distort I think, it, I think Romans, where Paul says, Who shall save me, wretched man that I am? So wait for that, unless you've read it already. But uh, I'm going to clarify or elaborate 